When the game gets rough and this life just seems so tough, make we talk, my people, make we talk. When this town becomes an ugly place, don't let it erase the smile from your face. Make we talk, people, make we talk. Conversation is the key. A guiding light for you and me Spark a talk and you will see Conflict solve A to Z World leaders master the art of self-defense Just by talk So people make we talk When the game gets rough and this life just seems so tough Make we talk, my people, make we talk When this town becomes an ugly place Don't let it erase the smile from your face Make we talk, people, make we talk Conversation is the key a guiding light for you and me Spark a talk and you will see Conflict solver A to Z World leaders master the art of self-defense Just by talk So people make we talk Hey, we're living in a world that on ourselves we must depend Make we talk People Good evening, good evening everyone A very special Sunday evening to you all Wherever you're watching and listening from around the world And the Eastern Caribbean Welcome to an edition of the Make we Talk program Right here on the Mecca Talk Jeffrey Tavares YouTube channel is a happy Sunday. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe wherever you are, wherever you listen from around the world. Welcome, 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 welcome. Well, this evening we're going to speak about, for some unknown reason, Mr. Delroy Truck pushed for the Office of the Political Armswood Man, Armswood Woman, to go into the ECJ, Electoral Commission of Jamaica's office. Well, a former ECJ chairman, Professor Errol Miller, is saying that, uh-uh, uh-uh, this should not be. It should not be. It's a conflict of interest. And I do not know why is it that the goodly gentleman, Jamaica's Minister of Justice, Professor Errol Miller, Professor Errol Miller, uh, uh, yes. Oh, Lord, I think I did something wrong here. Professor Errol Miller, let me correct this thing right here for me, please. Let me correct this. Just give me a minute, please. I think, I, yes, here we go. It's Professor Errol Miller. I do apologize about that. Professor Errol Miller. Professor Errol Miller is F. O no P P R P R O F. I do apologize about that. It's P R O F. Oh Lord. Yes, Professor Errol Miller. He is the one who um is saying that what they're doing is literally stupidness. It's wrong. It's wrong in what they're doing. And 
It should have happened. That shouldn't happen at all. But let us hear what Professor Errol Miller said. Because Professor Miller is really talking up some things that should have never should have never happened at all. I correct it on this thing here now. Thank you very much, my producer. Thank you so much for the correction. It will it will it will show pretty soon on the YouTube channel. Professor Errol Miller. Professor Miller is saying that not this has never happened since independent Jamaica in 1962 when we gained independence. And what the goodly gentleman Delroy Chuck did was not really <laughs> oh Lord of mercy was not really something that the man should have done. Well, we're going to see if we can get a clipping from what Professor Miller said. Bear with me here. Professor Errol Miller was speaking at a function, and the topic at the function was about the EOJ, the ECJ rather. The ECJ. And what Professor Miller said believe you me it will shock you it will definitely shock you and i want you all to listen to what professor miller said professor miller is a former chairman of the electoral commission of jamaica a former chairman and for a former chairman to take on the government in what they did, you must show that something is fundamentally wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. Because Professor Miller is saying to the people of Jamaica that what Minister Chuck is pushing or what he pushed for, it is wrong. And in the world thinking, Jamaican will know that it's wrong. But they believe that they are the law unto themselves. And they believe that nobody speaks to them about anything. Because, of course, they are the law. They are the law. They are the law. I want you all to listen to what Professor Miller said. Here we go. of 2006 that subsumed the functions of the political ombudsman into the election commission and made every election, every electoral commissioner ombudsman or ombudswomen. This is by far the worst legislation affecting electoral laws passed by the Jamaican Parliament. You hear what he said? This is this, this this by way the worst law passed by the Parliament of Jamaica. Listen to some more of this. Since becoming a nation in 1962. It has no equal. Sub -sub Since becoming a nation in 1962. So it's back to ask the question, Jamaicans, this evening. Why did Delroy Chuck push so much for this office to be in the office of the Electoral Commission of Jamaica? Why the political arms with my office has to be in that office? Something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere, and we, the Jamaican people, must speak out about it. We must stand up and speak out about it. Listen to some more what Professor Miller said. Uh, 
assuming the functions of the political ombudsman into the election commission and making each commissioner a political ombudsman or woman functionally alters, fundamentally alters the commission and brings every commissioner into direct engagement with, my, with the minutia of partisan politics. Wow. With the minutia of partisan politics. With the minutia of partisan politics in Jamaica. Listen to some more. Adjudicating complaints of intemperate speech, silly public behavior, disputes about color, posters, paraphernalia, and graffiti in a period of heightened political partisan bravado and emotions in election campaigning, and without any sanctions to apply to deviants is likely to diminish respect for both the electoral commission and its commissioners. In the past, the political ombudsman, while doing some good, was, it, was ignored by some candidates and their agents who defied their rulings, disregarded agreements reached, violated codes of conduct, all without consequence. To bring such impunity into the Electoral Commission is grossly unwise. Between nomination day and election day, the election center comes in as official space in which all the stakeholders and actors involved in the electoral process can meet and resolve problems coordinate events, of issue authentic information. Now, the election center is composed of one representative of each of the PNP, one of the JLP, one of the security persons, one of the Jamaica umbrella um, group of churches, one from CAFE, one from international observers. The political ombudsman and the director of elections. Now, when the election center meets, if a matter is of a political nature, the political ombudsman presides. Do you hear what he says? Do you hear what Professor Miller just said? If a political matter arised, the political ombudsman deal with that. So tell me something now. If a political matter arises in the parliament, in, 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 in the um, electoral office right now, can the electoral office, can the political ombudsman do anything about it? The office is in the electoral office. So can the political ombudsman do anything about it? Huh? The question that we must ask ourselves this afternoon, this Sunday, April 7th, is what is the reason why Minister Delroy Truck decided to put that office in the office of the Electoral Commission? It is supposed to be independent. It is supposed to be independent. There is something wrong somewhere. There is something wrong somewhere. It did not happen in 2006. It happened this year. Between last year to this year. And I think it's this year it happened. When Delroy Chuck was the one who went to parliament. And put legislation. I put a bill to Parliament for the political ombudsman man to be go to, to, to go into the Electoral Commission of Jamaica.
What is the problem? What, why did he do that? Those are the questions we must ask this evening as Jamaican citizens. For far too long, politicians push things on our throat and we accept it. For far too long, we allow these people to believe that they are demigods. And what they give to us, we must accept it. A former chairman of the Electoral Office of Jamaica, Electoral Commission of Jamaica, is saying no. Right now, people are still asking the question who really won the local government election? Is it that Delroy Chuck wanted, wanted us to go into the office? Is it that something went on that we don't know or know about? Huh? The Jamaican people are still uncertain of who won the local government election. The Jamaican people, Mr. Chuck, Minister of Injustice, Delroy Chuck, the people of this country of Jamaica is asking who really won the local government election? Because they can't, they don't know who won it. And they're asking you this afternoon, Mr. Chuck. Why did you, Delroy Chuck, why did you insist that the political ombudsman office must go into the Electoral Commission of Jamaica? You see, these people do things, you know. And when they do it, we the Jamaican people must not ask any question. We must just accept what they do because what? They rule Jamaica with an iron fist. They rule Jamaica with the iron fist. Why is it? And for those who are on air right now talking to me, I want you to go to the Gleaner of Sunday, April 7th. The Jamaica Gleaner of Sunday, April 7th. And listen to what former chairman of the ECJ. Electoral Commission of Jamaica is saying about the office of the political ombudsman. Listen to some more what he said. The director of election remains silent. If it is an electoral matter, the director of election presides political ombudsman Teams out of it. Now, if any commissioner becomes involved in that, the selected commissioners would either become triply compromised by office. And you the hear? director of. You hear? If there is a problem in the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, the chairman for the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, the director, they preside over that. If there's a problem in the political ombudsman office of Jamaica, the political ombudsman or the political ombudswoman preside. But it cannot be that the commissioner or the, 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 the director of the ECJ preside over the, the, over the political ombudsman office. That's a conflict of interest. And this has never happened since independent Jamaica. Has never happened. What is going on in our country? What is really going on in our country? What these people take us for? Some kuno muno? Huh? 
What Delroy Chuck check the people of Jamaica for? Some Kono Mono? That's what they're trying to tell the people of this country for. That we're a bunch of idiots, we don't know what we're doing. Listen to some more of what Professor Errol Miller has to say. Or the nominated members would change the balance of composition of the center. And if both abstain, the director of elections will be left to deal with both electoral and political matters, which is highly unwise. However, it gets even worse. This is where it gets worse. In passing this absurd, unworkable, impractical, unprecedented change. Both the government and the opposition participated in breaking the convention upon... You hear? Both the Jamaica Labour Party, which is the government, and the opposition People's National Party break the convention. It should not have happened. And the People's National Party sit down and accept it because they're a part of it. They are a part of it. They are a part of it. This should not have happened. The political Omswood man is a total different office from the ECJ. The ECJ cannot deal with a matter concerning the political Omswood man. And that is why. That is why when these people go to parliament and they use some flim blamber on words of the fundamental, the hypocritical of, of the Hitchcockal and Shashina Shashina, the layman in Jamaica don't understand one damn thing they said. They don't understand one thing they said. And for far too long, these politicians, these people who is put in the parliament, get away with a lot of things. Because the layman Jamaican don't understand the big highfalutin words that these people are using. <clears throat> hmm? And this what Delroy Chuck has done, it begs to ask the question, and I'm keep on asking the question again. Is there something that is going on in the Electoral Commission of Jamaica that we don't know about? That they don't want a political armswood man to be questioning it. So they put it under one umbrella. Mr. Golden. Mr. Mark Golden. If Jeffrey Tavares and the Mecca Talk YouTube channel right now and this program here is chatting nonsense. Tell me I'm talking nonsense, sir. 
you, Mr. Golden, have some answering to do. The people of Jamaica, Mr. Golden, need to know. <clears throat> How is it that this can happen? And you all sit in the Parliament of Jamaica and accept it. Excuse me a minute here. Yes, the government have majority in the parliament. But these are the things These are the things for those who want to come on this platform and use expletive, please. I'm asking you don't. This this is this, this is a platform that is run professionally. Please do not. I beg of you. With all due respect to you, have respect for this platform, please. These are the things that we need to ask. And Mr. Golden need to answer some, need, need to speak out about it. It cannot be a former chairman of the Electoral Commission of Jamaica is speaking out and saying that this has never happened since independent Jamaica. Never happened since independent Jamaica. Never happened since independent Jamaica. The, the opposition and the government have to answer to the people of Jamaica. Mr. Golden, what you should have done, sir. Yes, you don't support it, but come out and hit out left, right, and center about it, sir. Speak out about it, sir. We cannot, at no uncertain terms, sit back in this country and allow this administration to believe that they are demigods. But they are demigods. But whatever they say goes. I've never seen a government that break the constitution of this country like this one. Let's listen to some more what Professor Miller have to say. On which all of Jamaica's progress since independence, since 1979, has been based. You say, what is that? What is that convention? It is very, very simple. Remember, parliament is supreme. You cannot order parliament to do anything. It's the supreme body. More than that, the party with the majority can do what it wants because it has the majority. But here's a convention agreed to by both the PNP and the JLP since 1979. It is this. Okay. Okay. You, you heard what Professor Miller said? Both the PNP and the JLP has to agree. Unless my ears hear in doubles. Listen to some more. that the party that holds the majority will not use its majority to pass into law any legislation affecting an electoral matter. Okay. Okay. So what Delroy Trott did, the convention said, no party 
no governing party that has the majority in the parliament of Jamaica should use their majority to pass any legislation in the parliament that affect the Electoral Commission of Jamaica. That is what is going on. And for those who have an ear, let them hear. And for those who have understanding, listen. Listen. For those who have understanding, must listen. It's not a PNP or a JLP thing. Listen. I'm going to play back the entire thing. I couldn't listen to it, you know. But listen to this. You heard? You know, a lot of people come on this platform here, you know. And because they're pain pain, they're jail, people don't listen to people, you know. You heard what Professor Miller said? Both the PNP and the JLP, or the JLP and the PNP, must go back to Parliament if they do not. This stupidness, this nonsense is going to continue to happen. I want to play back the entire thing, make you all listen to it carefully before you comment and say, Professor Miller must leave Mark Golden alone. I want you all to listen carefully. I'm not shut for my mouth, but I couldn't listen to it. Listen to it carefully. Because you don't need to listen. You don't all need to listen. Let me see if I can get back this thing all the way from the top here. It needs, we need to have ears to listen to these things, you know, and listen to understanding. An, an amendment to the Electoral Commission Interim Act of 2006 that subsumed the functions of the political ombudsman into the Election Commission and made every election every electoral commissioner ombudsman or ombudswoman this is by far the worst legislation affecting electoral <laughs> laws passed by the jamaican parliament since becoming a nation in 1962 it has no equal subsuming the functions of the political ombudsman into the election commission and making each commissioner a political ombudsman or woman functionally alters fundamentally alters the commission 
and brings every commissioner into direct engagement with, my, with the minutia of partisan politics, adjudicating complaints of intemperate speech, silly public behavior, disputes about color, posters, paraphernalia, and graffiti in a period of heightened political partisan bravado and emotions in election campaigning and without any sanctions to apply to deviants is likely to diminish respect for both the electoral commissioner, commission and its commissioners. In the past, the political ombudsman, while doing some good, was, it, was ignored by some candidates and their agents who defied their rulings, disregarded agreements reached, violated codes of conduct, all without consequence. To bring such impunity into the Electoral Commission is grossly unwise. Between nomination day and election day, the election center comes in as official space in which all the stakeholders and actors involved in the electoral process can meet and resolve problems, coordinate events, of issue authentic information. Now, the election center is composed of one representative of each of the PNP, one of the JLP, one of the security forces, one of the Jamaica umbrella um, group of churches, one from CAFE, one from international observers. The political ombudsman and the director of elections. Now, when the election center meets, if a matter is of a political nature, the political ombudsman presides. The director of election remains silent. If it is an electoral matter, the director of election presides, political ombudsman teams out of it. Now, if any commissioner becomes involved in that, the selected commissioners would either become triply compromised by office and the director or the nominated members would change the balance of composition of the center. And if both abstain, the director of elections will be left to deal with both electoral and. Okay. I did some reading on something a while ago. Apparently the people's the Jamaica Labour Party override the convention that we just said a while ago and went and passed this law. The People's National Party, let me apologize to Mr. Golding and the People's National Party. They did not, because I just read something a while ago, they did not support it. I do apologize to Mr. Mark Golding and the People's National Party for misleading the public on this. But what I would say, Mr. Golden and the PNP should have done is don't stop talking about this. Sometime in, 19, in the 1980s, the late Michael Mandy did not contest the local government election put on by Edward Siaga. Listen to some more of what Mr. Professor Miller is saying. Political matters, which is highly unwise. However, it gets even worse. This is where it gets worse. In passing this absurd, unworkable, impractical, unprecedented change. 
both the government and the opposition participated in breaking the convention upon which all of Jamaica's progress since independence, since 1979, has been based. You say, what is that? What is that convention? It is very, very simple. Remember, parliament is supreme. You cannot order parliament to do anything. It's the supreme body. More than that, the party with the majority can do what it wants because it has the majority. But here's a convention agreed to by both the PNP and the JLP since 1979. It is this, that the party that holds the majority will not use its majority to pass into law any legislation affecting an electoral matter by using that majority to do so. Because I guarantee you that the, 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 the weaknesses that I've pointed out and the problems I've pointed out is going to occur in every single election conducted while it is in place. The foolishness is not going away. It is going to be exposed by experience going forward. And at that time, it has to be fixed. And I hope that by then, when it is fixed, people will already recognize that we must keep the convention. I'm saying this, I hope, my prayer and hope is that good sense will prevail and both the government and the opposition will go back to parliament and rescind repentant. Yes. We repent of this and make the local government election of February 2024 the only election that is conducted on this foolishness. You hear? And that is why I was saying, that's why I was saying, in the 1980s, under different circumstances, the late Michael Norman Manley or Michael Joshua Manley did not contest a local government election, you know. What, they, what Mr. Gordon should have done and why Professor Miller saying he hoped that the both the PNP and the JLP go back to Parliament. What he's exactly saying to all of us, that he hoped that the People's National Party would take a bill to the Parliament of Jamaica and say to them, mm -mm, it has to move from where it is. It is illegal. It has never happened in the history of Jamaica before. Never. You can't have the political ombudsman office intertwining with the ECJ. None of our forefathers have done it before. None of Edward Siaga never done it. Michael Manley never done it. PJ Pallis never done it. Portia Simpson Miller, Bruce Gold never done it. Why this one have to do it? Why this one have to do it? And I pray and hope that the opposition party will let, will let good sense prevail. And take this thing back to the parliament. As what the professor said a while ago. The nonsense and the charade. That this local government election went under. Must stop. Another election must not go. 
under the shire and shibangarang and nonsense put on by Delroy Truck. The last time I checked, this is, a, this is a democracy. But of course, a lot of people, a good friend of mine, saying if I don't say that Jamaica is becoming a banana republic under this administration. Huh? There are so many things that happen in the parliament, you know. That I know the opposition don't have the majority to say in it. But when these things happen, the opposition is quiet. They'll speak about it in the parliament for a couple of days, and that's it. These are the things that must drive home to the drive home to the Jamaican people what the Jamaica Labour Party government is doing. For the Jamaican people to get sense out of nonsense and say, no, it can't continue. It cannot continue. I can't stop talking about the jail, the PNP. The PNP is in the parliament. The PNP is Jamaica's opposition. And the PNP sit down. Yes, they can't do anything because the, the JLP have majority. But they need to speak some more about it. So don't come and tell me I must stop talking about the PNP. What I am saying, the, PN, the Jamaica Labour Party have 14 and the PNP have 14. The PNP is Jamaica's opposition. What they need to do is to say to the people of Jamaica, this went through to the parliament and the JLP alone did it and we must speak out some more about it. Let it be known to the people. Let it be known to the people. Go and read in the constitution. Consult your constitution. It can't continue like this, my fellow Jamaicans. You know, for how long the Jamaica Labour Party did not name a political armswood man? These are the things that the PNP must stand up and say, you know, cannot have a country that's not being run the proper way it's supposed to be run. And that is why all I am saying, I'm not blaming anyone, that if we have an opposition party, when things like this go down in the parliament of Jamaica, come out and speak to us about it. The same way, and this is why, you know, Mr. Golden, you did a, you did a remarkable thing the other day. A remarkable thing, and I lift my hat to you, sir. When you came out of the parliament of Jamaica and you stood up and you speak to the Jamaican people, sir. That is what I am saying to you this afternoon, sir. That when things like this happen, what you need to do, Mr. Golden, is call a press conference and outline these things to the Jamaican people, sir. They have 40, whatever you have, only have 14. They override the convention to pass a law. And that should have never happened.
That's all I'm saying. Come out and tell the people what they're doing. A lot of Jamaicans don't understand some of the things that goes on to the parliament, you know, sir. And some of who, some of some of us who even understand it. Now really understand it too much, you know, like myself, yeah. So all I'm saying to you, Sir Golden, these things, the Jamaican people who don't understand the fundamental and the hypocritical and the shaka and the and the much in the parliament, come out and explain it to them and say, listen, they did this and then that should have, this should have never happened. Or they override this and because they have majority They did that. Speak to us. Talk to us, Mr. Golden. Because this government believe that they are running the enclave of China. They want Jamaica to become a dictatorial state. You know what I don't understand with some people? My fellow Jamaicans on this platform, please. You all need to understand certain things, you know. Professor Miller is no hypocrite. He's a former ECG member, former chairman. And he was explaining. That's what I said. That's what I said. You know, we must listen before we speak, you know. He was explaining to us. What should happen under the convention? What should happen in the ECJ and the political answer office? We need to listen before we speak. We need to listen before we speak. We need to listen before we speak. We're having some serious times in this country. There's some dark days ahead of us in this country. Some very dark days ahead of us. We're going to open up the phone lines for those who want to call in. We're going to open the phone lines and then we're going to say good, good evening. The numbers to call is 954-529-8030. 954-529-8030. That's the numbers to call in. We're living, some dark, some, we're living in some very dark days in this country. When you have a government who believe that they can do things and get away with it. It's very sad. It is very sad. It is very, very sad. Some very dark days ahead of us in this country. And for those who think that Jamaica is on firm setting, 
would advise you to think again. We're not on firm setting in this country. We're in, we're in some very serious and troubled waters in this country. I keep on saying that this country is knocking behind Haiti's back door, and it is. It is knocking behind Haiti's back door. But I want to believe it, yes or no. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Mecca program. Hello? Hold on for me. Can you turn off your um, TV in the background, please? Let's go ahead now. Um, uh, thank you very much for bringing this. Hold on for me. I think we're having a little problem here with um, the, um, the phone here. Just hold on for me, please. Hold on for me, please. I am trying to get this thing out of here to see if it can work. All right. Go ahead for me now, please. Yes, I have been paying attention to the stuff. And I think because the opposition is of such, you know, a minority, it's like they're being bullied every time they try to say something. It's like a bully isn't going on in there. They, it's like they don't want to hear nothing from them. Hmm. You know, and the, I think this is why they've been getting away with all these things that's going on. And like I just, you know, put in the chat, maybe Mark Rowling going to have to get a bullhorn and walk with the streets of Jamaica and tell the people what's going on. That is exactly what I'm saying. It, 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 because they're not getting through anything in the parliament. They're definitely not getting through anything. Every time... I've been, you know, for a while I was not paying attention to what's going on. But, you know, thank God for you people, you know, these different platforms. Now, when I start to watch YouTube and, you know, because in regular news, you're not hearing anything. But now that I'm paying attention, I realize that the opposition is, is like they don't have any say. Mm. It's, it's a bullying thing definitely going on in the parliament. And, 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 you know, same thing, I, Kutukala, I think, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who's in positions in Jamaica mm -hmm. is saying that the PNP is a bit too cold. They sit down and they allow these people to walk over them. And the, PN, the opposition have power, you know. They have power, but they're not, they're not utilizing their power. Well, I guess not. And but the power that from... they have is to consult the Jamaican people. Yes, the Jamaican the people. Parliament. Let the Jamaican is... people rally around you. Maybe, maybe some DK Duncan's and others gonna have to rise up again. DK dead because I know he died. I know he died. But I said people like him gonna have to rise up now because. And, and and mobilize the people because it's like everybody going about their business and they're not paying attention to what's going on and because of that so many bad things are happening and the country is going down a slippery slope a very, very slippery point. slope my god have mercy I've never, I've, you know I'm, I'm old enough now I'm 66 years old and I've never seen this kind of stuff going on in Jamaica this is the worst my God. This is the worst. I've never seen anything like this. This government. I, you know, I've gone through all different kind of labor, PMP, Iman Holt, and whatever. This is the worst. These people are like pirates. More than pirates. My dear. I think what Professor Miller and everybody, everybody is misunderstanding what Professor Miller is saying, you know. Professor I Miller understand what the man is saying. That the opposition must stand up. Yes. Do not yes. allow this dictatorial government headed by Andrew Hunas and his wife it, to, it, believe, it's very bad. to believe that Jamaica is a GG Ping China or a Vladimir Putin Russia or a little rocket, or a little rocket man from North Korea. The last time we check, we're a modern democracy. Mm -hmm. When I see up to now, there's still a gag order 
about those six parliamentarians. Nobody can say anything. It's like we're in, where are we? Where, where, Jamaica is what? No, what is Jamaica? We're becoming, what is 62, Jamaica? we're becoming 62 years old this year, from August. <laughs> and in 62 years old, majority of our people don't have water in our pipes. I know. Huh? I know. Are we talking about a 2030 vision in this country? Mm. <laughs> and uh, the healthcare really is the worst. That is that is what really bothers me more than all. Because even when I think of visiting Jamaica, because Jamaica is my home, I, my my family house is down there and everything. I just pray that you know when I go down there, I don't get sick down there, I get in an accident or anything. Because this this system down here is so bad. All you have to it's do, very bad. All you have to do when you're going down is to buy. It's to buy, um, <coughs> sorry, I do apologize about that. It's to buy, I'm so sorry, my sign is affecting me. It's to That's buy okay. insurance with your, 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 your ticket, ma'am. Right, right. You know, it, you know, it, it, I, when I look and see what's going on in the hospitals down here, that is what really kills me when you really don't take care of the sick and the aged and the children with health care. Because and, and these you, people, you know what happened to you, you know what you know what to our country, ma'am. Our people will not stop this die-hearted thing. All we think about is our die-hearted. We don't think it's about crazy. Jamaica. It, it, it's it's not good. And the, the, the thing is, when these rich people, politicians, if they have a, if they need an extraction, they can take the plane and come to Miami and. Like the dealer wherever and get it and go back down and the people down there suffering. As soon as they get sick, they fly out a lot of them die up here. Yes. And they, they leave the people in down there in, 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 in slums. I've seen my family member in the hospital up at um, KPH and they had the family have to bring fans in there to blow on them. How can a hospital be that hot that you have to have your family have to bring a fan? To blow a little air on you. Mm. Come on. Have a good evening, my brother. You're doing a wonderful job. I really appreciate what you all are doing because I'm I'm learning so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow. Nine five four five two nine eight zero three zero. The numbers to call in. We're not going to stay long this evening because there's another program going on that I would love to go on and listen to. 954-529-8030. That's the number to call into the program this afternoon. What do you think about the political arms with man office into the, e the ECJ? Wow. Some serious times in this country. Dark days ahead of us. Marie Edwards, how are you doing? It's 14. Oh, hi, Vinette. How are you doing this evening? Vanessa, good evening to you. Serious, serious times in this country. When you have a government who decide to override all conventions, has broken the constitution of Jamaica how many times? And get away with it. And sit down and allow it. And we sit down in our country and allow it to continue. All because. We're a member of the people's, we're a member of the Jamaica Labour Party. We don't see anything wrong with them, what they're doing. We see something wrong in when we come on air and speak about it. But we don't see anything wrong when they breach the constitution and breach of 
fundamental rights. <laughs> May God help us. May God help this country of ours. The lady, we have to take a wash pan to the hospital. Oh my God. Why don't you call us and tell us some more about that, ma'am? In the Mandible Hospital, number is to call is 9545298030. It's also a WhatsApp number. So you can call via WhatsApp, 9545298030. I saw something today. A video I saw today. And I wish I... Let me see if I can upload this video. But I didn't want to upload because it has some expletives in it. And I don't want to play an air. Because I don't want my arm. Um, my other... My other arm. Um, radio station that we are broadcasting on. Get any arm. Um, strike because of that. But I saw a video out of Spanish town where gunmen shoot up somewhere and a man gets shot. Or get shot. And what I saw was members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force jumping on their bikes and riding away. <laughs> huh? Members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. I would have played the video, but I can't because of certain words that have been used in it. And I don't want, you know, the radio station get any um, backlash because of it. But when I saw the police them riding, I was saying to myself, what on earth is going on here? But if it, 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 if it was a taxi man, it was a taxi man. The police are running on the taxi man and give him one million ticket. But it seems as if the police officers in Jamaica only have one of those things for taxi operators. They have a hard on for taxi operators. Because if there's a shooter that went on in Spanish town, and the person was videoing the incident, we can see clearly two members of the Jamaica, the Jamaica Constable Force. Who, who swore to serve and protect and defend the constitution of Jamaica. To serve and protect the people and defend the constitution of Jamaica. The jump on, the, the, the jump on taxpayers' bike and ride away. Because they're not going for no gunman. But they're going after the poor, pauperizing bus and taxi operators. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Mecca Talk program. Good evening, Mr. Tavares. First time on the program. I'm always watching. Thank you. But, Welcome. Um, yes, I'm I'm from St. Elizabeth. I'm living in the state here. Where is the and, where are you from? <laughs> I'm close to all part. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, going to the hospital. This has been going on for a very long time. A very long time. You have to take your own bed linen. And your wash pan, because my mom took sick in 2010, and we couldn't go with a whole pack of diapers because I shipped them down and, you know, these up here, but they have the good ones here, but they're very expensive, so I would ship them down. So when I went down, I didn't know she was so sick, and we have to you, uh, share a pack of diapers. To be honest, you know, something what I had was to do. I'm not lying. I had was to pick one of the nurse mm -hmm. to, 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 to pay attention to my mom to change her so she doesn't keep on the wet diaper. Mm -hmm. And 
the, before I saw her and, you know, they steal them. So the one friend, you, everything you go with, you have to put a black marker on them. Everything. Dead linen, diaper, you can't mark diaper because everybody go with diaper for the family. You can't go with a whole pack and it's going on until now. So I had was to go with her own bed pan and bed linen. Even when she, she died, anyhow, she died. So we had was, when we went for the sheet, we go with this set for the single bed. There was no way to be found. Mm. Some, of, some of them. So it's not now, and that was 2010. So it's been going on for a very long time, and it's so sad. It's very sad. Very sad. Yes, ma'am. It is more than sad. It, it, it is sad to know what is going on in Jamaica there right now, and so, you know, all part, you, every place, listen, all part it belongs to, to, to the Chinese down there. And when I went to, uh, when I live here, Santa Cruz Market, we go, I go to. And I'm telling you, you can hardly find place to walk. You have to be walking in the road because the place, every little open place that I left there, built up and owned by Chinese. You hardly find some black people who own people who own business in, in, in where I'm from down there. But the place, there are times when they go to all part and block the place and decide and so but you know it, it, if they have strong people to go with them and do it all the time, but you know it it, it is so sad. We we have to be relocated for we, we was living close to Alpart by the modeling there and man those castic soda. Those you, 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 you remember in the 1990s, man, when the government threw some people in the mud lake down there? Yeah, yeah. And and what happened, we were, be, my parents, my mother was being getting compensated because when you, when you wash your clothes, they get damaged. When you get up in the morning and the port is so white, so everybody, until, so what have we not stopped paying us money now? We're not getting nothing, so you do something. Call it a lot. Mm. Yeah. So Chinese take over, nobody, nobody there uh, been doing nothing Ooh, about it. So, can you remember under what administration Alpat was sold to the Chinese, man? To be honest with you, nobody's going to know that. Our, our MP down there is Derek, Derek Smith. And, and it's like, Derek who? Walter, Derek Smith. He, he's no, the no, MP. No, 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 Derek Smith is no longer in politics, man. Well, is that I don't know if it's the same Derek Smith because when I spoke, I said, Who is you can't get him out? Listen, right now, what? Because we have the I have a black tank and I build an overhead cistern on my home. So, because I build on my mom's property, so if they run out of water, you get it, they go to my house. So, you hardly can get by. It's recently we got the water in front of the pipe, you know. It's recently they went out here because some of the people. People in so dark still Mr. Jeffrey that it, it, it is so sad to know that they don't get up and black road and demonstrate for what they want. No, they can't do that, you know, ma'am. They can't do that because it's a party in power, you know. Some of them, you see where I'm from, there's a very stronghold of people from since I grew up. But you have some licky licky because the other day I understand that they switch and they give them the money and now they're still they're hungry and the money is nothing to them. So, you know, those people who I born and see by heart in PNP, they're not going to change because they believe in that. But, I mean, people is suffering. People is suffering. Mm. Because right now there's an infirmary down in Santa Cruz and certain time, I just don't pack box and send it down there. If, like, for instance, if I plan to go to Jamaica this year, what I did is get a D container and I would buy a lot of Pampers and those. So let me you know, ask that question, ma'am. When you buy all those pampers and go to the wharf, you have to clear, you have to pay money to clear it yourself? No, what I did is just pay the, the shipping company and they want money, they pick it up from my house and straight. The, I just pay the driver for his pickup fee and. Uh, uh, oh, oh. You, you, yeah. you, still, you, still, you still pay to clear it anyhow, but you pay one more. No. I pay one money from here and they pick it up and when it, and they deliver it to my house. I just rather do that because oh no, oh no, oh no, see what's going on in the country. People who mean Jamaica good and try to send back home some little snick snack to help people down there. Yeah, that's in what I do. And so forth. Hold on for me, mom. In infirmaries and so forth. Yeah. They have to be paying and absorbing an amount of money 
to clear the container. But people of the Vumva van the Vumva V. Yeah. Who they carrying the gun them and they carrying the this and they carrying the that. Now pay nothing, you know. They're not doing it, and even the shipping company, this person who I ship with, once somebody make a plywood box and they pack guns in there, and he didn't know, and because of that, he he, he spike up his feet, so he's not carrying any plywood box for nobody on the cardboard. And they never really used to search, you know, but apparently, I don't know what happened if they get a set of power, but he didn't know because of the amount of things he have to do, he normally stay in Jamaica up here and have his truck and. Mina, hello, ma'am. Mina, open up business. Me, they ship anything for anybody, you know. And Mina, search it. Me, have to search it. Because I don't trust me Jamaican people, them. Yeah, once once, once I ship down one and they open it in front of him and I could see the, the, the custom tape. They tape it. I never, re I never really have complaint of missing nothing. But that's what I do when I'm going to Jamaica. Take it to the, the diaper, so... Because I don't have a lot of money because, you know, I'm here doing a home health kid. Mm -hmm. kid. So I would go to the, the stores and buy the trip and buy those single bed sheets. And when I go down, my mom have a niece work at the infirmary and wash them with bleach and have her come and collect them. Because there are people who is there who family not paying attention. So, you know, I see the need and... And I, I try to help out the best way I can. Um, because there's a lot of poor people. It, it is not like before. It is not like before, Mr. Tavares, because where the PNP or JLP, they used to go and visit the elderly, and it pays my heart. It bleeds to see that bloggers and people have to be taking up the government responsibility to go and build her. Right now, I knew somebody who I went to school with, and I, somebody sent something to me and said, girl, I think you know these people. So when I opened it, it was one of my schoolmates. He's a very good builder. And another young man of my, of somebody who I knew, he is homeless and he's living in the poor house that Altaic built. They asked him to open it so they could see in there. He didn't, he didn't open it. He and his brother have something and he's on the street. So they are trying and blogging and begging for some donation, missing donation helping them. So I called my brother and said, listen, I'm going to send the money for my light this week to pay my light bill. So I'm going to send a little extra on it. So call him. Call him and tell him to go by my house and ask my, my sister will give it to him. I said, even if he's male, he said, well, he's going to volunteer his time because he's married live with his wife. So he's going to volunteer to build a one bedroom from plywood and a bathroom outside. He cannot afford to build a flush toilet. So he could be able. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and see what it is. It, it, it's nasty. It, and, I don't know. And, and, and this prime minister, ma'am, go around building houses all over the place, you know. They all breaking grounds. He promised the people of um Clarkstones, you know, Mexico and Valley for them. You know, once when I was living in Kingston working, there is an old lady who didn't have no I didn't know no family member. But I used to leave my last daughter with her to go to work. And I have to beg and preach to her to take it. But she told me one day I'm gonna. I'm going to confess to you, I didn't, I don't like girl children. And she finally take that child. You know what I had? Girl children, why not like girl children? Uh, you know what? She, I think she was molested. That, that lady, she, you know, I finally just give in and she was very nice. And I had uh, to. No, hold on, no, man. Hold on, no, mommy. But I asked her, why you don't like girl children? I asked her, but, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't push it. I didn't push it because oh. she was a Christian lady and I. So she finally take her and spend, I keep her, she keep her when I go to work and pay her. If I buy six orange, I would give her two. And I have to put up everything that I have in a one bedroom I was living in Kingston because they give her notice, have no place to go. And everybody was telling me, why you take her in? Because she don't, she's not going to give her house. Give her. I'm not working for that. I'm not doing it. I said, the blessing that is going to fall on me, if, if I don't get it, my children are going to children will get it. And we talk about this thing because I said, boy, look what I have done. I'm not complaining. God will bless me for it. And my daughter did the same thing. And she, God bless her for so it. Let, let, let me ask you this question, though, mommy. When you buy all of these pampers and so forth and you go down with it, you give it to the infirmary and to other places down there, eh? No, I don't really just give it to infirmary alone because you have other old people in the district who is not able oh, 
Mm. I, yes, what I would do, I you see, while Greens and Walmart what happened, I would go to the church store because they sell it in in they sell it cheaper. Mm-hmm. So I like four ninety nine or something. You could go on Wednesdays, you would get it so what I would do is go I would cart and buy them and keep them and put it in a shed in the back of my house. And, and when I I, I ship it down and then if I want my brother to open it, if somebody is not able to help himself, mm. I would tell him to open it and give this one how much and give that one so much. That's, and I don't do it unless I'm going to go to Jamaica. If I finish shipping on a container, then I would pack just an ordinary box and say, okay, give it to this. Because you have other people here who give something so I don't buy all the time. But I store them in the back of a storage I have in my office here. Mm. Yeah, and my dear, I must tell you thanks. Yeah, for the service to your country, Jamaica. Uh, yes, it's it's it, it's sad, but you know we need they need it, they need it. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mister Jesse, it's so sad to know there's so much coming. Sometimes I cry because it's a boy. Look how hard I'm doing. Working, taking care of these elderly, but can't stand it because they call you. Most of the time, people ask, uh, Grandma, I know there's scammers. You know, but it, it is sad to see what is going on in the media, you know, with these politicians and so much. It's sad. It's really sad. More than sad, ma'am. And, and, and don't, don't let what is going on in Jamaica make your blood pressure go up. Because of that old lady, she, could, she was blind. So my daughter had to leave her. So I, somebody said, take her to the ministry to get help. She was blind. You know what I did one day? I asked my boss, can you give me some time off? I, I call a taxi, take her to the ministry, and I think it was Oxford Road, and I have to hold her hand to sign to get help. And until today's day, Mr. Tabaris, I've never heard from them to be able to get help for her. Mm. Oh, never. Okay, my dear. Thank you very much for All coming. Right. All right, nice talking to you. Same here. My pleasure listening to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Thanks again for your service to your fellow countrymen. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. This we're going to say so long from here for another evening until you hear a voice again. May God bless you. May God bless Jamaica land we love. I think um um the town hall meeting with um Wayne Lonesome and Herb Nelson Jr. and Maria is on. I don't think Mr. Mr. Ratigan is on this evening, but I think there's a town hall meeting going on right now. And we're going to segue out of here and uh, say have a great night, everyone. Join me tomorrow when I come to you once more with an exciting episode of the Mequita Jeffrey Tavares program. I just want to say to you all, to all our bloggers out there who continue fighting the fight for Jamaica, who continue talking up the things and continue. Pushing for a better Jamaica. Thank you all very much. I lift my hat to all of you. On the behalf of my producer here at the Mecca Talk program, Owen Brown, on the behalf of my other producer, she knows who she is. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for making this program a very exciting program once more. Have a great night, everyone. May God bless you. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Mecca Talk Jeffrey Tavares YouTube, YouTube channel. May God bless you and may God bless Jamaica land we love. Have a great night, everyone. When the game gets rough in this life just seems so tough. Make we talk, my people. Make we talk. When this town becomes an ugly place, don't let it erase. The smile from your face Make we talk People Make we talk Conversation is the key A guiding light for you and me Spark a talk and you will see Conflict solve A to Z World leaders master the art of self-defense just by talk so people make we talk hey we're living in a world 
that on ourselves we must depend. Make we talk. People. Unity strength. Make we reason. Make we talk. If we see corruption in any shape or form, we are going to highlight it. Make we talk. Jeffrey Tavares represent Yard and Broad and the entire diaspora. As long as it affects the life of our nation, uncover the truth. Make we reason. Make, Make we talk. talk. And we don't care about no vum va viva va. No upper echelon. Nobody is not above the law. As long as it not help Jamaica. Make, Make we, we talk. talk. Make we talk.